All right, so let's set up our system now to begin the basics of PHP. Okay, so to begin with, our folder is on the desktop. This is the folder that contains our website so far. Now, if you want PHP to run on your system and uh, run inside these pages, you can't simply put your website anywhere. You have to put it in a very specific place. So let's do this. Let me go out here and cut my folder out of here. And then I'm going to go to drive C, look for ZAMP folder, go to htdocs, and then paste in there. So our folder has moved to this one. Now, if you're using WAMP or MAMP, uh, check for the folder might be called www or ht or public html, one of those and you can put your folder in there. Okay, so let's open this folder now. And inside here, let me go out here. So let me open up my uh, text editor. Now make sure that you open the ZAMP control panel or whatever you're using and make sure that Apache is running. So click the start button here. Make sure that is on Apache and MySQL. So let's go here and start typing something. Okay, so to begin with, I want to create a file called connect.php. So in the same folder that we've moved, htdocs, zamp htdocs, my book, let me create a file called connect.php and save. Okay, now the file is empty, of course. So let me grab this one, connect, and go to my uh, browser and drop it there. Now, one important thing is that for the server to actually run, you have to change this file name to localhost here in the uh, in the address bar. So anything from htdocs, uh, zamp, c, and file name, all that should be changed to one word, which is localhost. So let me go here and say localhost so you can see it. That's the word. Cut it there and go here and paste. So now it becomes localhost my book slash localhost slash my book slash connected PHP. So now you don't see a difference, but PHP is now running. So to test this, let's go to our page that we've created and type angle bracket question mark PHP like so. This is how you initialize PHP. So let me save that. And then when I go back here and refresh, if you happen to see the word PHP in there, then something hasn't gone right. So make sure that Apache is running or you've typed the localhost part correctly. Now, if you don't see anything, everything is good. So let's begin. Now, the things we have to learn in PHP are here. So we're going to start with variables, arrays, loops, conditions, up to classes. Now, once you learn all this, uh, it's going to become easier to understand what we are doing. Now, I'm not going to go in depth in these things because I want to keep this tutorial as simple as possible. So I'm going to put links in the description to detailed uh, versions of my videos that I've talked about this already. However, I don't think that's necessary for you to go through those uh, because I'll be explaining everything as we go along. So in this particular video, let's start with variables and see what variables are. So let me come here and say, a variable now what is a variable exactly now a variable is a location in the computer's memory so for example if a user comes to your page and you ask them for their name and they type in their name you need somewhere to save that name so your computer can remember it now if you just tell the computer to save it there's no way you're going to know where it has saved that item so this is where variables come in now a variable is a name or an address to a location in memory where you have saved something. Now you can call the variable anything. So for example, I can say name. This is a valid name for a variable. Now, in order to tell PHP that this is a variable, I'm going to use the dollar sign. So once I do this, it knows that I'm creating a location in memory called name. And then if I want to assign a value into that item because now it's empty. It has created a, uh, a location in memory that's empty. 
So to add something to that location, I put the equal sign and I say something like this. Now I have to put a semicolon at the end of every single line. If you forget this semicolon, it's going to give you an error. So always remember to add a semicolon at the end of each line. Now, this is the name I have stored in here. Now, if you notice, I've put inverted commas here because this is what you always need to do if you are storing a word or a sentence. You have to put it inside inverted commas. They can be single quotes or double quotes. It doesn't matter. So once I do this and save, if I go to my browser and refresh, I still won't see anything because all I have done is tell it to keep, I've told it keep this name inside this location. Now, in order for me to see what's in this location, there's a word called echo. Now, echo means show me, show me what's uh, this or show me this or show me that. So I can just say something like this. If I say George, something like that. That's the name, right? I'd say Echo George. So if I go back here and refresh, you'll see George there, okay? So I'm telling it, show me this string, and it has done that. So if you notice, the inverted commas are not there when it's showing you that result. There are no inverted commas because the inverted commas are simply there to tell PHP that this is actually a word, okay? Like we did here. Now, if I wanted to show me what's inside name, all I have to do is replace this word with the variable. So I have told PHP that create a location called name, add this value to it, and then show me what the value is. So if we go back here and I refresh, you see that there it has shown me what's inside that variable. Now, variables can also have numbers Okay, so if I put a number, now if you notice, I haven't put inverted commas because it's a number. So numbers, no inverted commas. So if I refresh now, I see number two as predicted. Now the advantage of this, let me change this to a word, to a location number, because it's good to name your variables after what you're going to keep in there. So for example, if that was somebody's first name, I can name the variable as first underscore name something like that it would be a uh, first name something like so so first name and then you put your name there now since i'm going to store a number it's better i name this one number so that it's easier to remember okay so number is equal to two then show me the number so so now it's saying an identified variable name because what has happened here i'm trying to to echo a variable that does not exist because this one is called number. So let me put number there. So let's refresh and there we go, number two. Now the advantage of this is I can simply say number is equal to two plus four, something like that. So of course what it's going to do is evaluate this and then store it and then show me what the answer is. So it should show me six. Or what I could do is I could say number is equal to two and then create another variable called number two is equal to four or eight. Okay, and then echo number plus number two. Right? So now what I'm telling it, show me this whatever is in number, in number, which is two plus whatever is in number two. So in this case, it's going to be, it's, a, it's the same as saying echo two plus eight. So if I do this, it's going to be 10. I could also just say answer is equal to, and then get that, put it there, and then here just echo the answer. So what I'm doing here is I'm saying this one is two, this one is eight. Now, I want an answer. Now, inside that answer, put the sum of these two and then show me the answer. And 10 as predicted. So if I change this to three, and then you see the calculation goes to 11 as predicted. Okay, so to multiply, I can use the star. 
okay? To divide, I use the slash T. All right, so far so good. However, if I put a word in here, I just say word. This one is word, and then I try to do this because you can't divide that by eight. So let's see what we get. And we get an error, non-numeric value encountered. Okay, so when this happens, you know that you've missed somewhere, you've created a non-numeric value, which you are trying to calculate, and that is forbidden. So let me refresh that, and you see the proper answer. All right, so, so far, this is all about uh, variables. They're just a location in memory where you can store things. So I'll see you in the next video where we deal with arrays.